Hello and welcome along to Frog Life's Mapistry activity. I'm James. In this video, we will tell you all about what the Mapistry is before handing over to our professional textile artist, Maya, who will go into more detail on techniques and ideas you could use for your creations. The video will be available for a few weeks, so please do feel free to come back to it for inspiration or tips as you need to. So now I'll tell you a little bit more about Frog Life and what the Mapistry is. So Frog Life is a national wildlife charity and we're committed to the conservation of amphibians and reptiles and the habitats these species depend on. We want to see people from all walks of life get involved in the nature conservation activities that we run. We have a head office in Peterborough, but also offices in Falkirk, Glasgow and London. Frog Life gets involved in a variety of different works from practical habitat works, creating and restoring ponds, education and public engagement for events and raising awareness, and also research. The project I work on alongside my colleagues is called the Come For for Wildlife Project. This is a four-year project funded by the National Lottery Heritage Fund and supported by the Nature Scott Biodiversity Challenge Fund and a range of co-funders. Now we work throughout the Fourth Valley, so Falkirk, Stirling and Clackmanninshire, to develop connections to conserve and enhance the unique heritage the area offers. So we do this by raising awareness at wildlife gardening workshops, pond doctor events, and pop-up wildlife gardening workshops as well that you may have seen around Stirling, Falkirk and Clackmanninshire, our arts and crafts mapistry sessions that you're going to be doing within this month, and also getting stuck in and creating new ponds and restoring ponds throughout neighbourhoods and within our habitat sites as well. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the threats to amphibians and reptiles and what they may face in Scotland. So amphibians and reptiles in Scotland face many different threats. Development, whether it be housing, retail or otherwise, can cause ponds to be filled in and lost from the environment. Amphibians require ponds in which to breed and develop young so they are vital for their survival. The loss of habitat can spread to our reptile species too, as areas of heathland, woodland and other habitat types are lost. Disease is a problem and we can easily spread this on our footwear, clothing and equipment from park to park and garden to garden by accident. Pollution from agricultural operations or from roads is an issue and with pollutants often finding their ways into ponds and creating poor water quality. Non-native species can compete with our native amphibian and reptiles for food, resources and habitat or may predate upon them directly. These can spread from the pet trade or stowaways and maybe carriers to diseases from outside the UK as well. Climate change is a larger issue affecting our species. Native wildlife can adapt to a changing environment to some degree, but rapid change in the environment can lead to species decline. So here we'll tell you a little bit about the amphibians and reptiles that we can find in Scotland. You may have come across, across the common frog before. So we only have one species of frog in Scotland, which is native. They have smooth, moist skin, a dark patch behind the eye and long striped back legs that allow them to jump quite considerable distances. We have two species of toad, the first of which is the common toad. You'll notice these have rough, bumpy, warty skin and shorter hind legs, so they'll tend to hop or crawl at best. They don't have a dark patch behind the eye, but do have a golden iris. The natterjack toad is a coastal species only found in the far south of Scotland. They again have rough, warty skin, as do all of our toads, but they also have a pale yellow stripe running down the centre of the back. Here we can see frog spawn and toad spawn, so our frog spawn in the top left and toad spawn laid in strings in the top right. And tadpoles look very similar between frogs and toads, but you'll notice that frog tadpoles have golden speckles, toad tadpoles being almost jet black. We have three species of newt as well, the most common of which is the palmate newt. They don't have any spots on the chin or the throat region most of the time, but for the males you can notice in the two pictures to the left, the big black webbed feet and the tail filament at the end of the palmate newt. We do have smooth newts, especially in more urban areas. These can look very similar to the palmate newts, but they do have spots on their chin and throat regions. You'll note in the bottom left picture here is a male smooth newt with a crest that runs all the way down the body. 
The great crested newt is the largest newt species that we have and can measure up to 18 centimetres, being up to double the size of a palmate newt or a smooth newt. The males have a jagged crest you can see in the centre photo there and a white stripe or flash on the back of the tail. They do have slightly rough warty skin but have a very orange yellow underside with black splodges. Newt eggs are actually laid individually and placed into leaves to protect them from predation and UV sunlight and here's some examples of different newt eggs that you might find out in the wild. For our reptiles we have the common lizard. Now they measure about 15 centimetres from nose to tail so they're not very big. They have scaly skin and are usually a brown colour. They do move incredibly fast when they warm up in the sun. Another lizard that actually looks a lot like a snake is the slow worm and this is a legless lizard. They have smooth glossy skin, not much of a neck region as you can see on the photo here, but they do have an eyelid and can blink and no snakes can blink. They measure about up to 50 centimetres from nose to tail and tend to be a grey or brown colour. Onto our snakes and the most common of which in Scotland is the adder. You'll notice the dark zigzag pattern that runs all the way down the back and they have quite a stocky build but just measuring about 60 to 80 centimetres. You can also see they have a red iris with a vertical pupil. The grass snake is only found in the far south of Scotland. This is the largest native snake that we have measuring up to 1.5 metres long. They have dark bars along the bodies and a round pupil and a creamy collar at the back of the neck and can be found hunting in rivers, ponds and lakes. Lesser known is also the leatherback turtle and this is considered a native reptile of the UK but you would never find, find them breeding in the UK as it's far too cold. This is the largest sea turtle in the world measuring up to two meters long and up to 600 kilograms in weight but they can be observed off almost any coast in Scotland if you're very lucky feeding on jellyfish which is their primary diet. If you do see any of these amphibians or reptiles you can download our free Dragon Finder app on the Google Play Store or the App Store as well. Just search for Frog Life and you can find the Dragon Finder app. It will help you to identify what you see and submitting the sightings really helps us focus our work at Frog Life. So on to the mapistry then. So our mapistry sessions are arts and craft sessions and we want you guys to depict the local heritage of the fourth valley and what's around you and we're doing that by creating a series of map tapestries and you can see some examples in the pictures here. We're doing one tapestry for each month of the year and we want you guys to show us what heritage is to you. So this could be local landscapes, it could be buildings, it could be wildlife or attractions that you see on a daily basis. Whatever local heritage is to you and you can use any means that you'd like. So you'll have the packs from us here but you can draw or colour cut and sew and stitch whatever suits your level of kind of art and crafty level to create what local heritage is to you to go onto our panels. Once all 12 mapistry panels have been finalised our textile artists will have them all completed and then they're ready to go on tour. They'll be going around 17 venues in the Fourth Valley area on a two-year tour and this will allow local people and communities across the region to see the mapistry and the vision that you guys create. Once you're finished, there will be feedback sheets available when you drop off your excess equipment and materials. Please do try to fill one of these, one of these out. They are required by our funders and helps to keep these sessions free. Some brief ideas for inspiration here might be things that you've seen lately that are local heritage to you, any wildlife, any local heritage and how it made you feel when you saw it. Think about what amphibians and reptiles are doing at this time of the year. Any memories that you have of wildlife that you've encountered. I'll now hand over to our professional textile artist Maya who will give you some art and craft techniques and some further inspirational ideas. Hello, I'm Maya Nugren, a textile designer working with Frog Life to make the Mapistry project a reality. Through the Mapistry project, we, that's myself, Frog Life and you, the local communities are creating 12 tapestries using simple textile techniques celebrating a year in the life of wildlife and heritage in your local surroundings. The key character featuring through the 12 tapestries will be the great crested newt whose life cycle through the year will lead us to discovering the rich variety of amphibians and reptiles that are at your doorstep 
and the environment that they live in. We would love you to participate in the making of these tapestries. We want these tapestries to represent the things that are important to you. Have you had a look around? What's happening in your local area right now? You might be inspired to grab a sketchbook and draw some of the surroundings that you see and then translate these into textiles or you could use the templates that have been provided in the materials kit. Although normally we would be running these workshops in person, we have managed to put together some resources for you to be able to participate in this project from where you are. So I have put together some videos that show some simple techniques using stitching and glue to create some textile pieces representing a variety of the wildlife that you may see around you. Once we have all the textile pieces, I will assemble all of them into the 12 panels. You can come and spot the months that you've been working on and see your textile pieces in the big picture. You may also want to use some of your own unwanted clothing. Uh, if you have something that's a really particular color that you would like to use, please feel free. But we would just like to ask you to wash these first before you use them. We are using secondhand fabric and textiles for this project to highlight the importance of reducing natural resources consumption and textile pollution and landfill waste. We realize that landfill waste has a direct impact on the welfare of the local environment and we want to do everything that we can to reduce this. We hope that this sounds inspiring and we are very much looking forward to seeing what you come up with. So I'm just going to go through a few things that have been made in the previous workshops and showing you what you could do. So you've got templates and um, you could create your own impressions of frogs or or toads. There's a couple of different versions of a, there's a hibernating newt and a great crested newt and a non-hibernating great crested newt. There was another newt there and that one that I showed you before. And Here's a tiny little adder that someone has made and then these things that we made, I made earlier. So all these little pieces will build towards the bigger picture of the 12 panels for the mapistry and it will be great to see your interpretation of the beasties or the plants or even if it's some local building that really means something to you or, or your community community it would be great to get you could you could sketch out the building you could look at a photograph or you could go in situ and look at the actual building sketch them out and then use these same techniques to to build a textile version of those 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 um, significant landmarks of your home surroundings. Enjoy it. I hope um, I hope it's been inspirational, and um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what kind of creative outputs you'll come up with. Thank you for watching.